My name is Linda Penn. I am one of the advisors for the Forest Lake Chapter of the National Honor Society. Despite these strange times we are in, we want to take this opportunity to celebrate the accomplishments of our current members and induct our newest members. To the family and friends of the current members, Ms. Tostrud, Ms. Lutz, and I extend a heartfelt thank you for a wonderful year with your delightful sons and daughters. They really have been a pleasure to work with. We look forward to the same in the coming year with our continuing and our new members. All of the students being honored today have excelled in challenging courses during their high school career. Students who have maintained a 3.5 GPA after the second quarter of their junior year, or a 3.8 cumulative GPA after the second quarter of their sophomore year, are invited to apply to NHS. However, academic achievement is just the beginning. They must also demonstrate character, leadership, and service. Students who complete an application in which they list specific academic courses, volunteer service they have performed, and specific examples of leadership and character they have demonstrated within the school and the surrounding community. Each applicant also writes a concise essay explaining why he or she would be an excellent candidate for membership. All of our high school staff are invited to share feedback on the leadership and character of the candidates. And then a five-member faculty advisory council reviews the applications and recommends those students who will join NHS for the coming year. Today's new inductees have demonstrated excellence in the classroom and the community, and we look forward to the work they will continue to do in the coming year. We would also like to thank Principal Jim Caldwell for his support and guidance through this process and throughout the year. As you can see, it is a challenging process to get to this point and truly an achievement worthy of celebration. We will now hear some reflections from our officers on the four traits that are pivotal to membership in National Honor Society. Hello, my name is Caitlin Atkin, and I'm here to speak about the service pillar. It's a shame we have to hold induction under these circumstances, and that the year ahead is so uncertain. But NHS is first and foremost a service organization, and your dedication to selflessness and service is more important than it has ever been. I encourage you to remember that anything you can do will help others profoundly. I don't know what this next year of service will look like, but you're all here for a good reason, and we recognize your talents. You are all beyond capable of stepping up and helping out. Some of the regular volunteer options are no longer options. Volunteering at Fairview and our senior centers is suspended. Big community gatherings and children's events as well. Who knows when these things are going to be safe enough to schedule. So for now, and however long it may be, service is anything you can do every day to make someone's life better. I want to include some wonderful things that people are doing in NHS right now to recognize their efforts. If you are safe and able and willing to help, take these options under consideration, especially you incoming members. Buying groceries for at-risk neighbors or extended relatives, making face masks, writing thank you letters to our frontliners, doing yard work around the neighborhood, virtual tutoring, picking up trash in the neighborhood or public spaces, and dog walking for those unable to do so. However, if it is unsafe for you or you have family obligations, we all understand. Your safety and the safety of others is the most important thing. I want to stress that service through NHS is not a competition of who has the most hours or who finishes the requirements first. It is not a punishment to fulfill your minimum hour requirement. You wouldn't be here if you didn't want to be here. So if you're sitting at home, out of a job, and those of you that are working are doing plenty enough, thank you. But if you are sitting at home and out of a job with nothing to do, and life just seems so meaningless and empty, try looking outside of yourself. The answer may not be focusing on yourself, trying to make yourself feel better, but making others feel better. I promise you'll feel better for it. Thank you.
Hello all, I'm Madeline Best, one of the four officers for this year's NHS Society. Today I will be talking about the scholarship pillar of NHS. The scholarship pillar is one of the four pillars for NHS and for all members, we know that this pillar is one of the preliminary characteristics used to filter through possible applicants to the society. While it may be viewed as something a lot of seniors and eventually juniors are feverishly scrummaging for, the word truly holds much more meaning and purpose. In literal terms, scholarship is defined as an academic achievement and learning of a high level. What many high schoolers may come to realize is the concurrency scholarship possesses. Scholarship does mean achieving learnings of high levels, but it also means accomplishing so while learning to juggle all other aspects of student life. Being able to satisfy your academic life, family life, social life, work life, and all other aspects is definitely not a simple task. Yet the members and future members of NHS have figured out how to do so and will continue to learn how to manage even more tasks. Upon each application cycle, advisors find students who have earned specific unweighted GPA marks that would grant them the opportunity to apply. Apply, meaning that those who withhold those GPAs are not all granted membership into NHS. By the time you enter your junior year, students begin to comprehend how heavy course load can become. So achieving the GPA that NHS members do is one accomplishment in and of itself. From there, the applicants are sifted through even further. So admission to the society is a genuine privilege and one that definitely permits some celebration. While partaking in this club, members continue to maintain their academic status of scholarship, but they also continue to grow with what they figure to manage. You will learn that you may have projects due, a work shift, and an event you committed to volunteering at, but multitasking those tasks are what set these members apart from the rest. Their willingness to immerse themselves in rigorous tasks and complete them to the best of their ability truly encompasses the whole meaning of scholarship. It is in the society where students will be offered a multitude of opportunities that will help them build many characteristics such as leadership, interpersonal skills, communication, and much more, all while maintaining a sufficient GPA. With all being said, don't be afraid to take a leap and fill up your plate. You will learn what tastes you like and don't like, what you can finish and what you can't finish, and through all of that, you will come out a stronger individual. I've been fortunate enough to be offered many volunteering events that have led to lasting memories and amazing friendships inside and outside of my academic life. That is why membership to the society is truly a gift and one that keeps on giving. So enjoy your time here because it definitely goes by fast. Hello, my name is Elsa Tastrud. I am one of the advisors for NHS. Because service is such a vital part of what we do as an NHS club, we would like to recognize those who have gone above and beyond the requirements. There are three students who have reached the ambassador level for youth service as described by the United Nations. These students have each completed 100 hours or more in the past year, participating in a minimum of 12 different activities. Their combined efforts are equivalent to more than $20,000 of benefit to the community. Each of you will receive an award for your service. So we'd like to acknowledge Grace Holly, Grace Land, and Cameron Oaks. All active members of NHS have earned honors awards as well. These awards will be available for pickup in the lobby over the next two weeks. Hello, my name is Bailey Donaski, and I'm one of the officers for the National Honor Society. I will be talking about the pillar leadership. If you were to ask me two months ago if I knew who the governor of Minnesota was, I wouldn't have been able to tell you. Governor Tim Waltz, in a span of a few weeks, has had to take on a challenge he would never have expected when sworn into office. Since March 18th, schools across Minnesota have sat empty and will remain that way throughout the end of the school year as part of a series of measures laid in place to protect people young and old from the deadly coronavirus outbreak. Additionally, although against popular opinion, Waltz instituted a life-altering stay-at-home order. 
On Sunday, April 8th, in his latest State of the State Address, Waltz had these powerful words exerted from the Minnesota Department of Health for struggling Minnesotans. Staying home is the only vaccine we have right now. You're slowing the spread of the disease. You're protecting your neighbors. You're giving hospitals time to prepare to care for many who will fall ill. You're making a difference and you are certainly saving lives. When I think of a leader, the words integrity, accountability, decisiveness, and positivity come to mind. Integrity is someone who is honest and has strong morals and principles. Walt is staying true to these morals by being upfront and truthful about the virus's progression and the efforts towards developing a vaccine. Accountability is expected to justify actions and responsibilities. Walt has also demonstrated admirable decisiveness during this whole ordeal. He has been willing to make tough decisions such as calling school off and instituting a stay-at-home order, unafraid of the backlash that he has since received, including protests that have even reached his own doorstep. Certainly these decisions were painful to announce, knowing people would wind up without jobs, knowing seniors would miss their last of high school, knowing every aspect of our lives would change, but ultimately there are decisions that have saved lives. During these troubling times, Waltz has remained persistently positive in the hope that there's a light at, this, at the end of this long, dark tunnel. His goal is to keep the community safe and have the fewest people infected as possible. Throughout this period of uncertainty, Governor Tim Waltz has been a leader and a game changer in the Minnesota's battle against an invisible enemy. Because of his leadership capabilities, Waltz has convinced the Minnesota community to put their own interests aside for the greater good and has driven his state through a crisis that is staring the entire globe in the face. You may not be presented with the same tall task of leading your state through a pandemic, but Walt has pre presented all of us with an example of what, of what it takes to lead no matter what the situation. Take note of the qualities he has displayed because today you can start being the leaders of tomorrow. Thank you. Hello, my name is Cody Angst and I am an officer for the 2019-2020 school year. While National Honor Society is academically oriented, it is not only about grades. You are all invited to join NHS not only because of academic achievements, but because of the content of your character. Character is the last pillar of NHS. Of course, it's a very hard thing to quantify. Character is defined as the mental and moral qualities distinctive to each individual. It cannot be measured in any one moment. It must be judged over the course of a lifetime. It is an ever sliding scale of how we carry ourselves and how we react to situations. The way I see it, having character is to stand by your values and moral principles even when it's tough. You are all chosen for NHS because we have faith that your values are ones that can make the world a better place and that you are willing to defend them. As NHS members, we are called to attempt to better ourselves and others every second of every day. You always have a choice between defending what you believe in or following the crowd. And sometimes it's not easy to make the right choice. In fact, sometimes the right choices are the hardest to make. We cannot allow ourselves to fall victim to abandoning our backbone. This world needs people who are not afraid to support what's right. To stand for what you believe in is an incredibly powerful thing, so much so that it gives us the power to change things. Every single one of us has the capacity to continue making choices that will make our lives easier. But character is the ability to see more than just ourselves. We also have the ability to choose to help others and better other people. That's what NHS is all about, making the choice to help even at your own expense. Use your time in NHS as a stepping stone to continue to make that choice, to build your moral character. Let others around you be inspired to do the right thing because of you. Like I said before, character is hard to quantify, but I know that every one of us has it. And I know that by helping others, our quality of character will stand the test of time. Thank you. We would like to take a moment to thank our officers for their hard work this past year. They have taken the lead on many of our service events like trick or canning, 
Walk to End Hunger, and our newest event, Make-A-Wish Month. Their direct leadership, as well as their leadership by example, has been invaluable to the operation of NHS. We say a sad farewell to Caitlin, Madeline, Bailey, and Cody as they head off to other ventures. They are the kind of leaders that our world needs now. Leaders who are courageous, kind, hardworking, and compassionate. We are pleased to say that there are others who are ready to step into their shoes. Current members who have demonstrated leadership behind the scenes and have offered to step up as officers for next year. It is my pleasure to introduce our officers for the 2020-2021 school year. Amelia Hauer, Grace Land, Christina Aschenbauer, and Justin Schoer. They will have the challenge of stepping up as leaders in a world that looks a little different and needs their leadership now more than ever. As we welcome new officers, we also welcome a group of new members. The students being inducted today have made it to this point with hard work and dedication, but we also acknowledge that many people have supported and inspired them along the way. Each of our new members was asked to name a person who has been influential in their lives. We would like to recognize these honored guests at this time. Lance Meyer, Daniel McIntosh, Amanda Brett, Abby Legield, Logan Barr, Jean Olkers, Breck Olson, Rachel Bostrom, Nakia Broughton, Mike Kaiser, April Barnick, James Wolock, Elizabeth Besicki, Robert Cully, Emily Disler, Carol Ann Manning, Linda Penn, Rick Dersrick, Deanne Fagerland, Francisco Gallegos, Amy Gaynor, Tim Newcomb, Cheryl Oquist, Kale Henry, Isabel Tao, Ed Valentini, Tim Wagner, Paul Iwasco, Patrick Boone, Ed McHugh, Sandra Hookstra, Jolene Hoave, Caitlin Johnson, Heather Potharst, Lynn Fisher, Marlene Armstrong, Roseanne Fix, Mary Jo Christians, Kristen Lusky, Deborah Kipp, Bonita Nelson, Terry Ludecki, Christy Iverson, Colleen Devine, Andy Richardson, Tony Harris, Coquila Patel, Ali Lutz, Macy Roberts, Andrea Rolls, Bonnie Schleitlin, Joanne Comer, John Fee, Mary Lee Fee, Connor Thesfeld, Veronica Roltgen, Holly Larson, Timothy Hassler, Aaron Turner, Joan Zobitz. Now I invite our principal, Mr. Jim Caldwell, to read the names of our new inductees and lead them in the National Honor Society Pledge. In the fall, students will sign the official NHS logbook, receive their NHS pins, and join the official ranks of NHS. Mr. Caldwell. As principal of the Forest Lake Area High School, it gives me great honor to announce this year's 2020-21 inductees into the National Honor Society. Vivian Algier, Ben Anderson, Paige Anderson, Cooper Augie, Sabina Barr, Paige Bakenstoon, Hallie Jo Baldwin, Lydia Bostrom, Kaylee Broughton, Cole Brisboy, Allison Bessler, Isabel Castillo, Jonathan Cubis, Adam Cully, Adam Disler, Hugh Drinkwitz, Eva Dufresne, Evan Duzik, Madison Fagerland, Nico Galagos, Jonah Gonier, Abigail Goodwin, Anika Gunderson, Jocelyn Hildreth, Candace Hilt, 
Alexis Hoekstra, Alexis Hovey, Jacqueline Johnson, Heather Cope, Madeline Kinney, Courtney Knutson, Claire Golstead, Aliyah Kurlemeyer, Mary Landher, Abigail Liegeheld, Joseph Liegeheld, Anna Ludke, Kennedy Mayer, Colin McGeary, Samuel Moberg, Connor Neeser, Sophia Nelson, Ashan Patel, Talon Peterson, Maddie Roberts, Andrea Roca Navarrete, Joshua Schlichting, Karen Severson, Leah Streff, Cole Swan, Francis Terlizo, John Terlizo, Vivia Tao, Carter Thiesfeld, Andrew Valenti, Ali Vetch, Jack Waldy, Madison Walters, Adam Witzel, Katrina Yeager, Madeline Zack, Mitchell Zemke, Ethan Zimmerlin, and finally, Molly Zobitz. And my apologies for any names that I mispronounced. Congratulations to this year's National Honor Society inductees for the 2019-20 school year. It is a complete honor to be chosen in the National Honor Society. To quote Muhammad Gandhi, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. To be a member of the National Honor Society is a big deal. You do not get this distinction just by showing up. You get this distinction because you have already been on the path of finding your true self by being lost. You have been lost in study, in character, and in leadership, but most importantly, you have been lost in serving others. Hopefully, through your membership in the National Honor Society, these qualities will be forever ingrained in all that you do, and you will continue to be lost. Current and past members of the National Honor Society at this time, I invite you to stand wherever you are and join me in rehearsing the National Honor Society Pledge. I pledge to maintain my high scholastic standing, standing to, hold to hold a fundamental, fundamental and worthy and, and, and untarnished, untarnished character, to endeavor intelligently and courageously to be a leader, and to give myself freely in service to others. In doing so, I shall prove myself worthy a place in the National Honor Society and strive to make his ideals the ideals of my life. At this time, to wrap up our ceremony, I would like to invite Mrs. Penn back to the stage. Congratulations, all. As we cl close today's program, we want to thank all in our community, fellow teachers, families, and community partners who have helped make this possible. We want to thank Paul Peterson and LATV in particular for the technical assistance in putting together a virtual induction. We wish our outgoing members success as they move forward and we celebrate with our new members who will continue to have an impact on our Forest Lake community in the coming year. Thank you for celebrating with us. Thank you.